Hey guys, Dr. Childs here. Today I want to talk about Cytomel and uh, specifically I want to answer the question, does Cytomel help with weight loss? Um, throughout this conversation we're actually going to be talking about how to use it appropriately um, and, and a, a little bit about dosing as well. So we'll be talking about um, if you determine based off of the conversation we have here if it's worthwhile using um, in your daily regimen or with your um, existing thyroid medication we'll talk about how to use it. Um, so let's start the discussion off and first I'll just jump ahead and say that Cytomel does usually cause weight loss or help with weight loss. I don't want to say it causes but it, it results in changes in the body um, from a metabolic standpoint that increase several uh, well, they either reduces hormones or increases certain hormones that affect your metabolism in such a way that it increases your metabolism and does indeed help with weight loss. Now, that all sounds good, but in order to get those benefits, it has to be used correctly because Cytomel is one of those medications which is potentially dangerous if, you, if not used correctly. So let's talk about, first of all, what is Cytomel and why does it work so well. Before we do that, we kind of need to um, explain the we won't go into great detail on this, but just a little bit of basic thyroid physiology. So first, let's talk about the two predominant hormones floating around in your blood. Um, one, the, the most, the one that you probably know about is the inactive thyroid hormone, and emphasis is on inactive here, of T4. Okay, now T4 sort of floats around as a reservoir because it needs to be converted to T3 um, through a special uh, enzyme called D2, we'll just abbreviate it, uh, abbreviate it as such. But anyway, D2 um, cleaves off an iodine molecule on the T4 and it turns into T3. Okay, now T3, um, well actually before I go into T3, let me explain a little bit more about T4. So T4 um, is probably what you are taking if you have hypothyroidism. Now the medications that are, um, that include T4 only or only have T4 in them, um, include Synthroid, Levothyroxine, Tyrosint, um, and a number of other ones. Now this is by far the most commonly prescribed type of thyroid medication, meaning most doctors, if you are, they're giving you thyroid hormone, they are giving you a T4 only medication. And the important thing here to realize is T4 is inactive. Okay, now, um, so that's, that's, that's why that's important, T4. Now the next one is T3. So T3, while T4 is inactive, T3 is active. It does not need to be converted. Um, and therefore, all of the positive side effects that we associate with thyroid hormone, um, such as, we'll, we'll talk about these in just a second, but um, all, of these, all of these positive benefits come from T3. Now, T3 medications include Cytomel, which is what we're talking about now, um, which is why it's so powerful. Um, and then generically, it's known as liothyronine. And then in addition, you can get the medication compounded, um, and that's called SRT3 or sustained release T3. So what does, what does when we talk about thyroid hormone in the body, what does it actually do? So I've included a graph here that talks about just some of the effects that occur, that, just some of the effects of T3 in the body. And since almost every tissue in your body has a thyroid hormone receptor, there's some benefit in all the tissues all over. So obviously we can't include everyone, but we can talk about some of these. So you can see here um, the brain, the pituitary is down here, and then obviously there's um, thyroid hormone being secreted from the pituitary, or I'm sorry, from the thyroid gland itself, um, and it must be converted via D2, or the uh, deiodinase type 2 here, um, turns T4 into T3. Now T3 has several actions. So you can see here this T3 um, having action in the liver, um, um, on muscle tissue, on the pancreas, all over the place, um, on the cardiac tissue, et cetera, et cetera. So we'll talk about just some of these. So um, you can see here uh, through its effect on the liver that it's increasing lipolysis and reducing body fat. So lipolysis is a way to say it burns fat, which is awesome. That's what we want. Um, over here in the muscle tissues, it's actually increasing energy expenditure. So that that's a, energy expenditure is kind of a fancy way to describe your basal metabolic rate. Again, what we want. Um, in the fat cells themselves, it's increasing brown fat thermogenesis, which is a fancy way of saying it's increasing um, the amount of heat that's being produced, and that is going to result in decrease in body weight as well. And then in the hypothalamus, it's resensitizing the body, uh, the brain to leptin, which if you've 
read any of or if you've listened to any of my other videos you know just how important leptin is in terms of weight management so and then obviously in the cardiac tissue increasing blood pressure and heart rate and then you can look at all these other places but that's kind of beside the point here i just wanted to show this show this schematic which um, helps uh, elaborate um, on why T3 specifically does uh, help with weight loss in not just one tissue, but several tissues throughout the body. So it's actually really interesting. Now, um, it's worth, worth, worth also pointing out here that there is one other very important thyroid um, metabolite that we need to discuss, and that's reverse T3. Now, T4 is inactive as well, but T4 um, it is good in the sense that it can be converted to T3. Now T4 can also be converted to reverse T3, and I'll show you show this schematic down here. So T4 comes out of the thyroid gland. It either gets converted to T3, which we want, or reverse T3, which we don't want. Now under certain circumstances, uh, various factors can increase reverse T3 and decrease T3. Those things include stress, trauma, low-calorie diets, inflammation, toxins that's like endocrine disruptors things like that and then certain medications so what can actually happen in a lot of patients is that they're taking a t4 only medication like synthroid level thyroxine etc and then they're also experiencing stress or they're dieting all the time or you know they're not eating very clean and they have some inflammation in their body so that t4 that your doctor has given you may be turning mostly into reverse t3 instead of t3 that we want right and so this is how this is, I, this is why, rather, some patients who use these medications actually feel worse. Now, the benefit to using T3 in this setting is that if you don't supply the body with T4, then you have removed the reservoir from T4 to turn into reverse T3. So you can bypass this conversion process by directly providing T3, and that's exactly what Cytomel does. So you can skip the chance that your body, so like let's say you are somebody who has done a lot of low calorie diets, you're somebody who has inflammation, you have chronic pain, you have joint pain, you're under a tremendous amount of stress, and you're taking T4, it's turning into, into reverse T3, that's not really doing you any favors. So if you bypass this, you take Cytomel directly, now you can get all the benefits of thyroid hormone that we discussed here to actually help you lose weight. So in a nutshell, that's really what we're looking for. So you, again, you can look at all these things, and I've, I've uh, gone into great detail on, um, on several of the other aspects of this, including how to increase T3 if you're not able, or how to increase free T3 levels if you're not able to get um, your doctor to prescribe T3 medications, etc. We're not going to go over that right now. So how, how does um, T3 uh, basically help with weight loss? Well, we kind of already described it, um, but there's two points that I want to mention here. So number one is um, that we already, this is the portion that we've already discussed, and that is this. T3 is responsible for all of the positive benefits that thyroid, that you associate with thyroid hormone. So that means taking T3 will help increase your basal met metabolic rate, which is your metabolism. It'll help um, directly uh, increase fat breakdown and help you burn fat. Um, it's going to improve the your uh, it's going to increase the amount that uh, a fat or I'm sorry increase the amount of energy that you burn inside your muscle tissues, which will again increase your metabolism, and it's going to directly sensitize your body to insulin. Again, another benefit. And then lastly, um, and th there's more than this, but this is just kind of off the top of my head. Lastly, it's going to help reduce leptin resistance. So we already talked about those things, but there's one other really important um, reason that it will help you, and that is because a lot of you are being undertreated. Okay, so, and we know, you know, that low thyroid hormone causes weight gain. I, I've written about this. There's um, plenty of articles. Um, there's articles on my site that explain exactly how this is. But the majority of you are probably being undertreated. And that's true uh, in most cases, but you just kind of have to take my word for it. So by adding in T3, you're, you're not only helping your body get the thyroid hormone it actually needs, but you're so and normalizing that amount that's in your body, you're also getting the direct benefits of the, of the T3 itself. So this, and there's several other ways I talk about that, how it bypasses the conversion proxa, uh, process and why certain thyroid medications don't actually help. But in a nutshell, that's how you can kind of consider and, and uh, understand how it, how it may benefit you in terms of weight. Now, that sounds really good. Uh, I, and if you're listening to this, you may be nodding your head and you're like, yeah, yeah, that's me, it's totally me. Um, I need it. I want to get it. I want to lose weight, you know, and you might be thinking that. So, and I think that's normal, but hold on one second, because just because it has those benefits that we discussed doesn't mean that it's right. It doesn't necessarily mean that it's right for you. I'm not saying it isn't, but there are certain patients who would stand to benefit more than others. So let's talk about those patients. So what sort of, 
what sort of things should you be looking for um, in order to determine if T3 is right for you, like Cytomel, T3 only medication. Um, now, this is just a list. It's not an exhaustive list that I put together, but in my experience of treating a lot of patients, um, I've kind of have found that certain groups of patients um, who share these characteristics tend to do better on t with uh, T3, um, like Cytomel. So first of all, let's talk about, uh, let's just go through, all these check marks are kind of uh, people fall into these categories. So the first one is um, those who have high levels of reverse T3. You can learn more about reverse T3. I won't talk about it too much here, um, but if you have high levels of reverse T3, their chances chances are high, you may need it. If you have a history of leptin resistance or a, or a serum fasting leptin level greater than 10, yeah, I use 12 here, but 10 may be a little more sensitive, so you can kind of use that as a reference range. Any history of diabetes, pre-diabetes, or insulin resistance. Why? Because T3 directly helps with uh, increasing insulin sensitivity, which is a great thing. A personal or a family history of bipolar disorder or a strong family history of depression, suicide, or other, other mental health disorders. Now, there have been some very interesting studies that have taken, um, pa they've taken patients with bipolar disorder who have failed uh, traditional and conventional antipsychotic therapies and mood stabilizers, etc., and they have showed that supra-physiologic dosage, dosages of T3 have, in about 80% of patients, were enough to dramatically, dramatically reduce the symptoms of bipolar disorder. So I bring that up specifically because bipolar disorder tends to be number one difficult to treat. These type of things tend to run in families, and there's a potential for great benefit for using T3 um, in these patients. Now, even the authors of the of the study that I'm quoting here, they mentioned that. They use pretty high doses. They use up to 90 micrograms on, I think it was about 88 micrograms. We'll just round up to 90 micrograms of T3 per day on average um, to get this benefit. But that's a pretty pretty strong benefit. Another group uh, of patients include those with fibro, a history, a personal history of fibromyalgia, those who have chronic fatigue syndrome, or those who have chronic pain syndrome. So those kind of all, they, they share a lot of similar symptoms, so I kind of group those together. And then of course, lastly, uh, people or someone who does not feel well on T4 only medication, Synthroid, Levothyroxine, Tyrosine. Now, recently I talked about um, hypothalamic obesity disorder. So um, it's worth kind of bring, tying that in for just a second. So if you, if the chances are high, if you're not feeling well on T4 only medication, but you're experiencing the symptoms of hypothyroidism, there, that's a, a a risk, uh, or a, let's say a red flag, um, that you might have the condition called hypothalamic obesity disorder. So if you fit into that category, I would recommend that you go watch that video um, on my, or listen to the podcast um, on my YouTube channel, because that will be really helpful for you to understand, because that's treated in a completely different way. So um, we talked about some other things here, but let's talk about, I'm going to skip over this for now just due to time, but let's talk about how to actually use it safely. So if you decide to use T3, Oh, Cytomel or, or any other formulation of T3, there are a couple things that you'll want to do. So as you're using it, you want to make sure that you're doing, I recommend two things. Um, in the beginning, you should do these daily, um, and later on, you don't have to be quite as aggressive with it, but you should continue to monitor them on occasion. Number one is your resting heart rate um, or resting pulse, and number two is your basal body temperature. Now, the reason for this is, if you recall in the beginning of this, um, the, of our, the beginning of our discussion, we said that um, both of those things can be increased by T3. And since when you're on T3, your thyroid labs change, um, they, they change dramatically and they become less, um, it becomes more difficult to interpret them, especially for conventional physicians. I've done it a lot, so it's easier for me, but for conventional phys physicians, it can be a little bit confusing. They don't quite get it. So you need to make sure that you are chest test checking these two things. Now, you want to make sure that while you're taking T3, your body temperature does not exceed 98.6 degrees. And you will notice that if you fall into the category of those who would benefit from Cytomel, you will probably, you probably have a personal history or just know from experience that your body temperature tends to be lower, right? And that's a direct product of having low T3 in the body. The other thing is you want to make sure that as you take medication, the T3, that your resting heart rate does not exceed 80. I mean, it can kind of be in the low 80s, and that's usually okay, but definitely no higher than 90. And I would say just to be safe, don't let it go above 80. Now, the T3 has direct, in most of your body, the way thyroid hormone works is that it um, it's a, it latches onto the nucleus of the cell. So it goes, goes into the cell, goes onto the nucleus, and it um, kickstarts 
genetic transcription, which is a way of saying basically that it changes your genes. And that's how it works. That's how thyroid hormone T3 works in most tissues in your body. However, in certain tissues, and your heart is one of these tissues, um, it doesn't do that. In fact, T3 just sits right on the calcium channels and it causes an increased force of contraction of the heart immediately. So this is why some people who take T3, um, they feel that, that rush, that palpitation, or, or they feel like they're, they're, you know, they get jittery. Um, and that's, that's why it's a little bit different. So that's why we need, to, we need to monitor your heart rate while we're doing this. So um, we'll talk about just a couple of other things here. So Cytomel versus Synthroid. You're probably well aware of um, Cytomel, or you're probably, I'm sorry, you're probably well aware of Synthroid. Um, but the, the question I get a lot is, can, your, your doctor may not be willing to just give you uh, T3 by itself. However, your doctor may be willing to add a little bit of T3 to your existing dose. Now, if this is especially true for those post-thyroidectomy or those who don't have a thyroid or for those whose thyroid has been completely ablated or whatever, if it's just not functioning anymore, um, it, it's generally as a rule of thumb, I'd recommend to try and get about um, an 80 to 20 ratio of um, T4 to T3. So just as, a, just as a quick example, if you're taking 100 micrograms of T4, um, you would try to get to around 20 micrograms of T3. Okay, so try to do, try to get to some ratio like that, and you'll probably find a tremendous amount of benefit. So the reason I bring this up is just to say that yes, T4 can be taken with T3 and vice versa. And so even if you're not able to get it by itself, that may be um, a worthwhile endeavor for you. The next thing is, talking about T3 or cytomel and T3 versus natural desiccated thyroid. So is one better than the other? Now this this is um been debated. It's not like one is always better for the other. Like it does it's not like there's some best thyroid medication out there that everyone needs to get and when they get it they'll feel amazing. You you want to kind of eliminate that thought process from your head. Instead it's more about what does your body need? Um what do you tolerate? And the specific, what hormone imbalances do you have? What nutrient deficiencies do you have in your body? So instead of, instead you really need a personalized approach. So you can't, don't try and simplify it to think that one is necessarily better than the other. Now, by the time most patients get to me, they tend to do, they tend to need more T3 because they have more issues and, you know, they've been kicked around for a long time. There's a number of reasons. We won't talk about all those. But basically, the, the, most people do, um, by the time they need to see me, do benefit from T3. And I, I do frequently use the combination of T3 and NDT on many patients. So the, there's one thing worth noting here is that natural desiccated thyroid still does contain the majority, the majority of the thyroid hormone in NDT is still T4. So that's, that means that if your problem is, is uh, related to conversion, you can be taking NDT and still still taking a lot of the T4 in NDT and turning it to reverse T3. So in those cases, it may actually be better um, to drop the NDT dose and temporarily increase the T3 dose. So um, that works well for many people. Now, the other thing is um, sustained release uh, T3, which is SRT3 we mentioned previously, versus immediate release T3. So basically, um, there's We'll simplify this. There's a lot to talk about. I recommend that you, um, I recommend that you read through this though. If if you haven't done well on on Cytomel by itself, the immediate release T3, you might just need to be switched to the sustained release, and that might be sufficient for you. Now, there's a couple reasons you'd want to switch. Now, one would be the fact that the immediate release T3 seems to, seems to make you too jittery, and if that's the case, it may just be because you're rapidly absorbing it and it's flushing the cardiac tissues and it's causing those issues we talked about previously. Um, however, in certain individuals, you don't necessarily want to always go to sustained release T3 because if you, it, it's more difficult to absorb, which means that, let's say, I give you just for ease 10 micrograms of sustained release T3, you may only absorb half of that. But if I gave you immediate release T3, you may absorb 90% of it. So you have to consider these things when you determine which one's best for you. So let's talk about, let's talk about um, real quick here, the, the symptoms um, and side effects associated with Cytomel. Now, the, by far the most common include hair loss, but that's usually temporary, so don't let that freak you out. It, usually it's temporary. It goes away in about two to three, three, three months or so. Um, the, other one would, the other ones would include heart palpitation, increased heart rate, increased body temperature or hot flashes or, or warm flushes or flashes. Um, weight loss is most, most common, but sometimes, I've seen this a, ha a handful of times, it can cause weight gain. Um, the jittery sensation, increased anxiety, headaches, loose stool or diarrhea. Now, all of these are caused by taking too much T3. It's not a direct 
cause of just taking enough T3 for your body. You don't think about it like that. If you're if you're taking enough, you shouldn't have any negative side effects. In fact, you should have all the benefits. And the positive side effects include weight loss, increased energy, decreased hair loss, increased cognition and improved memory, decreased brain fog, improved sleeping cycles and circadian rhythms. All of these things, if you if it's used correctly in the right amount in the right doses, should ultimately improve dramatically the symptoms that you're experiencing. Um, and then lastly, uh, I will provide these with you. I'm going to skip that section and talk about this one. But um, I, because this is kind of a long, complex topic, I've included a couple case studies here that you can go check out. So um, here's one. I, I talk about more specifically how I use these things. Um, so let me pull these up for you in just a second. But we talk about um, this is a speci specific examples of patients who have used them. Um, this person lost 40, 40 pounds. Um, diabetes was reversed in three months using T3 NDT um, and some other therapies. And then this one over here, again, a Hashimoto's case studies, 50 plus pounds weight loss on Nature Throid um, plus AI, AIP plus LDN. And she ultimately needed some T3 too. So you can you can see case, ex case uh, studies, some before and after pictures, et cetera, if you want. Um, I would go back into this and read through those um, if you find it interesting. So that's pretty much it. Uh, I hope you guys found this educational. This was a lot of um, of information. So um, just make sure you come through and read this. I, I'm not able to talk about everything, otherwise we'd be here for a long time. Um, but hopefully you guys found this helpful. Um, as an aside, um, I would, if you enjoyed this, I would ask that you um, consider subscribing to uh, to the Facebook channel, or I'm sorry, to the uh, to the YouTube channel, um, leaving a review if you're listening to this on um, uh, via podcast. These things kind of um, they can really help me to know if I'm helping you guys. So I really look to you to determine where where I should put my energy and what I should write about and what I should do. So if you if you if you found them helpful, great. Please uh, subscribe or leave a comment. Um, if you found them not so helpful, I want to hear that too because if you tell me, then I can kind of help tailor them to you to help you guys. So all right, I, that was that was pretty much it. If you have any questions, please leave them below. Otherwise, I will see you guys in the next video.